This is Roxanne from the uh, police, of course, and uh, I've been doing several police tunes lately, and everybody seems to be really enjoying them, so I thought, why not? Let's do another one. Uh, this is Roxanne once again, and it's a pretty simple tune. Again, there's no solo or anything like that, but it's got those classic sort of uh, chord voicings that Andy Summers likes to use. So uh, it's got a definite staccato sort of reggae meets punk approach to it, if you will. And the first chord in line here is a G minor. So I'm barring across the first three strings at the third fret, and I'm using my ring finger for that. And you want to make the chord very staccato, right? So you can do that by releasing the pressure right afterwards, or even muting back here. I actually do a little bit of both, to be honest. However you choose to do it, you want to make it as staccato as possible. And he'll do that eight times before he actually enters the chord progression. And even though they enter the chord progression uh, instrumentally, it's also the same chord progression that you use for the verses, okay? So first we have... And then we are in. And the uh, full chord progression is played like so. So let's go through each one of those chords. It starts out with the uh, G minor, of course. And then we move to a D minor. First fret, first string, third fret, second string, and second fret, third string. And we're just working with those three bottom strings for these first two chords. So each of those chords gets four strokes of the pick. up here to uh, a G minor and uh, this is the way Andy plays it. Fifth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the G string, eighth fret on the B string, and sixth fret on the uh, first E string. Now if that's kind of difficult for you to get to depending on how long you've been playing from the D minor, I know that can be a little bit rough so if you want to you can just go like this. that exact same shape from the first fret up to the sixth fret. It's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, Andy does play it with the uh, four string version, but either way is fine. So now we have and so for this next chord, which is an F, we're barring across the first three or four strings. I actually bar across all four. Your second finger is on the sixth fret on the B string, and your ring finger is on the seventh fret on the D string. And then the next chord is the exact same shape, moved down a whole step. So now we have two chords for the verse are and as you can see they are both the same shape as well this is a uh, F suspended four bar across the first two strings at the first fret pinky on the third fret on the G string and then your ring finger on the third fret on the D string so we've got one two three four and Moving it up a whole step, and those are the verses, and you'll play that twice for the verses. So now we move into the pre-chorus, and the pre-chorus is played like this. Very nice.
nice. And so as you can see at the beginning of the pre-chorus, we have this E flat chord, which is exactly like the F we played, barring across the first three or four strings, fourth fret on the B string, fifth fret on the D string. So that's a shape we've used already. In fact, these remaining chords are what we've used already. So we have back to the F suspended four, barring across the first two strings at the first fret, and then uh, the third fret on the G string, and the third fret on the D string. And that's gonna move up a whole step just like it did before. So on that second go around, what I played is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And we land at that big, beautiful chord, okay? So I'm barring across all six strings. My ring finger is on the fifth fret on the D string, and my pinky is on the fifth fret on the G string. Very Beatlesque. You might recognize that. So again, it's So after we've landed that big beautiful chord, we're going to go back through the verse and the pre-chorus again. Uh, but you'll notice when you listen to the recording, they'll sit on that G minor a little bit longer. I trust you can pick that up from the recording. But again, we're going to go all the way through the verse again, a double verse, pre-chorus, and then finally we're going to hit the chorus. And the chorus will come, of course, after the pre-chorus. The chorus, of course, after the chorus. <laughs> Let's talk about exactly how that's done. So we come off of the pre-chorus. So we land the chord. And we just kind of mute back here, a little light muting, and stick with the top two or three strings at the most and just kind of build it with those eighth note grinds. And then we land a C chord, and you can play the full four string one. I'll talk about a couple of different ways to approach uh, this chorus. But I'm on the uh, third fret on the A string, and then barring across the D, the G, and the B at the fifth fret with my ring finger. If that's too difficult to do, just play three, five, five, like that with your ring finger and your pinky but be sure to stay with those three strings in your right hand. Either way is going to sound just fine. So you can see right out the gate, I took the C down to the B flat. And this is where the interesting stuff starts. Sometimes Andy just plays these chords outright. he adds that he seems to vary it pretty much randomly but sting does play those in the bass those little half step uh, slides so it's nice to add it into the guitar part although I want to stress that you don't have to do it every time you can just ride the chords if you want to cool as well right and then if you've got a bass player doing the uh, those little half steps it sounds great but I'll show you how to put those in there anyway so uh, the first four chords are exactly the same shape which is cool of course so I went one two three after you land that B flat chord three strokes so what I'm doing there is I'm hammering on the open A string to the 
first fret on the A string. Uh, it's all part of the chord, of course, but it's... So that's one stroke of the pick, followed by two strokes of the pick. And then you can see the three at the end. That's the rhythm you want to wrap your head around. I'll do that again really slow. Then bring it up to the 6th fret. Exact same rhythm work in your right hand. Exactly the same. But this is a little trickier because you've got to slide from the 7th fret to the 8th fret on that A string. That's why sometimes this might be a little bit easier to do. It just depends on you as a player. Whatever works for you is fine. Either way is cool. Uh, of course, this chord sounds slightly fuller, but it's really no big deal. playing uh, I, for this one keep it to an F power chord first fret first string third fret next string third fret next string okay I kind of bring in a little bit of that G minor chord but you don't have to you can just stay with the power chords and you can do the same thing there if you want to or you can just pound out the chord chord as I like to call it again. So we're playing the chorus twice through essentially and then landing on the big chord at the end. Roxanne from the police another classic from them and uh, I'll do some more police people have been asking me to do more so I definitely will and uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson all the best to everyone thanks for supporting the channel and we'll see you guys real soon <laughs>